Good morning and welcome to Bara at Home. So glad that you're with us. My name is Joel. I'm the lead pastor here. Uh, we're going to continue our series today called Keep Looking Up with a message called Fit for a King. And I, I'm excited about that, but I'm excited for the opportunity we're going to have right now to worship, to gather together. Even if it's online, we get this opportunity to understand God is with us. He's omnipresent. He is among us right now. And I'm going to pray to him as we start our gathering. Father, May your will be done in this gathering. May you get the glory and honor. May we bring you a gift of our attention, our focus, our worship, our singing, our adoration, our heart. And I pray, Father, that we would give a gift, an offering that is fit for a king. And I pray, Father, you'd be speaking to us now, working on us now, stirring our affections for Jesus now. We love you, Father. We thank you and we need you. It's through Jesus' beautiful name I pray for a church that I love. Amen. morning and thank you so much for joining us. Hey, if it's your first time, would you do us a huge favor and go to barachurch.com slash I am new and fill out a little bit of information and we would love to hook you up with some Starbucks. Thank you again so much for tuning in and let's get started.
So I love to watch my grandkids open up Christmas gifts. Um, Noah and Vivi are in the sweet spot, four and a half years old. I mean, it's going to be awesome this year. It was great last year. Nyla, two and a half, a little bit young for the sweet spot of Christmas gift opening. But uh, it takes me back as I see the joy on their faces and the joy on our kids' faces uh, for Kim and I to see our kids excited about giving their kids gifts. And uh, we're just so, so grateful for that opportunity. But it takes me back to remembering our kids and their excitement. I remember John getting a skateboard and he was just fired up or Laura got an easy bake oven. Um, Emily's gift's a little different. She got uh, four yoga balls only because we didn't communicate in the family. And so I got her a yoga ball for Christmas and Kim got her a yoga ball. And uh, John and Laura both got her one and she had four and she would put them side by side and run into the family room and dive on them and roll everywhere. And it was the source of a lot of joy. So Emily liked that. But, but just thinking about Christmas, everyone has that one gift, that gift that they shred through all the other ones, they're excited, but there's that one gift that if you were going to travel and go to another relative's house, you would take that gift if you were only able to take one gift, or it was maybe a bigger gift or a more expensive gift or the gift that you were really hoping for. And so for me, my mind goes back to the Schwinn Mag Scrambler, 1978 version, fire red. Uh, it, was, it was the dream gift. I had been uh, exposed to the adult conspiracy about the, uh, the uh, legend of uh, Kris Kringle, if you will, St. Nicholas, uh, going back to 280 AD in Turkey, where St. Nicholas was very benevolent and, and he helped people out and even uh, paid dowries for uh, girls so that they wouldn't be sold into prostitution. And now he wears a red coat and gives everybody gifts. And, but I knew the reality of that. And so I knew that Santa would not be getting me a 78 Schwinn Mag Scrambler, uh, you know, the one with the 20 inch nylon cord uh, tires, the uh, five point mag spokes there. Uh, it had, I think, um, 18 tooth rear sprocket, 36 front sprocket, uh, six and a half crank uh, inch. And again, I, I can give you all the details. I just knew that it costed $159 in 1978. It wasn't the $200 that my friend's mongoose cost, but the Schwinn Mag Scrambler was the high end for me. And I knew my grandfather, St. Wayne Coffee, would be the one to get it if I was going to get it. So Christmas comes, I'm 10, uh, out there in San Carlos, California, open up all the gifts and no mag scrambler. I just kind of resolved, okay, I guess we didn't get it. You know, it's a pretty expensive gift, I understand. And uh, maybe I'd been bad that year or the previous 10, I don't know, but, but I just thought I wasn't getting it. And my grandmother said, oh, go check outside. Uh, maybe Santa left something. And I was like, oh, okay, real, haha. -ha. But I, I humored her and I walked outside and there it was right there on the front porch with a bow, uh, the 1978 Schwinn Mag Scrambler. And I rode that bike from the third grade all the way through the eighth grade. I didn't fit on it anymore. Uh, I love that bike. It went everywhere. Baseball practice, football practice, basketball practice, soccer practice. It helped with paper routes. It was the kind of thing you'd take out late at night when you snuck out of the house to go explore the city. Jack in the Box, McDonald's, wherever we went, I was on my 78 Schwinn Mag Scrambler. That was the gift. See, all of us have a gift that we take everywhere, that, we, that means the most, that, that we hang on to, we keep close. It's with us at all times. I don't know what yours was. Maybe it was a skateboard or an easy bake oven or, dare I say, some yoga balls or even perhaps a 78 Schwinn Mag Scrambler. But I know that all of us had one. There was that one gift. You know what a gift I'm talking about. Let your mind hearken back to that. And I want us to think about that in relation to our message today. As, as I've called it, fit for a king. Uh, we're talking about a gift that is fit for a king. Now, here's the deal. I wouldn't fit on it right now if I had it. And, and that would really be awkward. Anyway. I didn't fit on it in the eighth grade. But could you imagine me like riding up to church, you know, ready to go and on the 78 Schwinn Mag Scrambler? That'd be so weird. But I wish I had it because it's got value. But I don't. In fact, I researched. I went down a rabbit hole preparing for this, and it's like $1,200 for a one in mint condition. And, you know, it was $159 new, but now it's worth $1,200. But, but that's not the reason I wish that I had it. It would just be the emotional connection and the memory of having this gift that meant so much to me as a kid. So today, I want us to talk about a gift that means so much, but it's one that we're not going to outgrow. It's one that, that we would never dare sell or trade. It's one that we're not going to let go of. I, I don't even know, to be honest, I don't even know what happened to my 
Schwinn, Mag, Scrambler, 1978, Fire Red. Uh, I don't know. I don't have it. But I know that there is a gift available to all of us that we can take everywhere. And it is literally able to go anywhere and everywhere. And it's the gift of a relationship with God through Jesus. Jesus made that possible for us. His coming makes that possible possible for you and I to have a relationship with God. And we've been talking in this series about God's sovereignty. We said, you know, God started off first week. God's omnipresent. He, he is, um, excuse me, omniscient. He is, nope, he's omnipotent. He's all powerful. Then we said last week, he's omniscient. He is all knowing. This week, he is all present, omnipresent. He is everywhere at the same time God exists in. There's no place or space or day or time where God does not occupy. He can be everywhere at once. Now, the word omnipresence is not in the Bible. We got it in probably the 1600s from Latin. Um, but the Bible definitely talks about and teaches us that God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. Uh, we see it in Psalm 139, Psalm 113, Proverbs 15, Isaiah 57, Jeremiah 23, Hebrews 4, verse 13. See, the Bible does not put limits on where God exists, on where God is. He is everywhere and available at all times. We see him in the garden. We see him in the burning bush. We see him uh, in the pillar of fire, in the cloud. We see him in the, the fire with the three men, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego story we talked about a month or two back. Uh, we see God come to earth as Jesus and dwell among us. We see him rise up from the resurrection. We see him coming through the Spirit at Pentecost in Acts 2. It's an amazing thought that, that God is literally everywhere. Now, I know you might think when you hear that and go, well, he's everywhere, but I thought God's on his throne in heaven. I, I've read some scriptures about that. I heard some stories about that. He is. He is literally everywhere in heaven and everywhere on earth. In fact, every appearance of God is one that can exist in heaven and earth simultaneously. And so before we jump into this text, I just want us to unpack omnipresence one more time or a little bit more, because I, I think it, it would give us some perspective on just how big God is. Therefore, when we understand how available God is, how awesome he is, should uh, change even more so when we realize how available God is. See, because God's omnipresent, you and I are never alone. Like God's with me right now as I preach, and I always pray that God would pour through me the gift of preaching. At the top of my notes, it says they need Jesus, not Joel. I, I'm, I'm aware. I, I'm talking to God and saying, God, please speak through me, pour through me the gift of preaching. Help me. Let me speak courageously and truthfully and in love. And, and so God's with me as I preach, and he's with you now as you listen, whether it's Sunday morning, December 19th, 2021, or any time there in the future, God is with you. He is completely with us everywhere always and so therefore we're not alone ever. The other reality that comes from God's omnipresence is that you and I can live courageously. We don't have to be in fear. Not only do we not have to be alone, but we don't have to be in fear. Like, like God gets us to be, to, because he's with us, it enables us, it, it propels us to do things that are big or difficult or even scary, but we don't have to be in fear. He promises he'll never leave us or forsake us. Uh, I, he's, he's traveled with me from, from Haiti to Mexico, from uh, the, the Czech Republic to uh, the Dominican Republic, from Anchorage, Alaska to Uganda, Africa. Like God has been with me. And, and in all those situations, especially Haiti, has it always been safe? No, absolutely not. I mean, it's crazy. It's AKAs and gangs and what buried people and there was all kinds of disease and problems and death and it was horrible. It was hard, but God was with me. And so he's with us when we travel out. We're, we, we can be courageous. We, we don't have to walk in fear. And then lastly, because God is omnipresent, like it shapes our view. His bigness is expanded. As, as scientists and, and astrophysics guys like discover more and more and more about our ever expanding universe, we're finding out that every layer of creation, every layer of existence is, is even captured in black holes and like these rings. And, and we're learning more and more and more about intelligent design and more and more and more science is going, uh, there has to be a creator in this. Like, like God's fingerprint is all over the world, the universe, creation. And because of that, 
We see that there's no place in creation, in the universe, that God does not exist. And lastly, he is everywhere in the biblical Christmas story, the, the birth narrative. We see God in it. He's not just over it. He's not just behind the scenes. He is right there in it. And so today we're going to be back in Matthew 2. We're going to look at a one particular verse. I'll recap for a moment, but, but we're just going to be in one verse and camp there. Uh, and, 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 and uh, you know, if you're like a Star Wars, Star Trek guy, you could call this passage or this text the original Star Trek. It's about the Magi, the, the guys from the East, and, and they're bringing their gift, and it's a gift of time because they've got to travel a distance. And so they go, and they, they're the Gentiles. We don't know their number. I've said that. You know, tradition puts them at three based upon the gifts. But, but they make this trek from the East, and they get to Jerusalem, and they say, hey, where's the one born king of the Jews? And the people get them in front of Herod, who's the king. And so now, wait, what, the one born king? Uh, okay, so Herod like has this plan and he doesn't like it because he's threatened and he's going to kill Jesus. So he's trying to figure out where Jesus is, the Messiah at this point. And he calls a secret meeting later when he finds out it's Bethlehem and he sends the Magi down to Bethlehem. It's about a 14 mile trip. And so the evil king helps the Magi find the good king. And I've said that God is sovereign and over all of that and he's in all of that. And then I even said he could use a fake king to help lead people to a real king. So they peace out, or the theological term is actually chunk up the deuces. And then they leave Herod and they head down to Bethlehem and they come to the house now, not the, the inn, the house. So it's been some time since his birth. Uh, the census is over. The place is cleared out. There's room. Somebody takes them in. They're in a house. They come to the house. They see the star. They're overjoyed that the star tells them where to go. And they walk into the house and we left it last week by saying they bowed down and worshiped him. But that's not all they did. We can see that this was no run-of-the-mill, ordinary, uh, hey, we're from the East, we're people of tradition, uh, we understand when kings are born, we're going to go and represent our king, probably from Persia, and we're going to bring a gift and be representatives. And so it's just niceties. This is civil stuff. It's just pleasantries that we're doing. No, you don't open up the treasury. You don't give the gifts they gave. You don't give the type of gifts, the quality of gifts, the expensive gifts. Those gifts that they brought... Those were fit for a king. And so we can see even in their gifts, what, the, what their gifts are, it, it tells us a lot about the giver, those men and their affluence, and, and their, they have some affluence, right? But more importantly, the, it actually tells us about the person receiving the gifts. We see that. The gifts given say something about the giver, but they say even more about those the, the person that's receiving and in this case it's Jesus so let's look at what happens next then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold frankincense and myrrh they opened up their gifts these treasure troves that the, the, that word uh, treasure it, it's like uh, the word for casket, mini caskets. It's these giant gift boxes like pirate treasure. Like they're carrying these boxes filled with a lot of valuable things, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And then they present them. That word's the same word that's when you give an offering to the Lord. Uh, when you present an offering before God in the Old Testament, there was offerings presented at the temple. Same word. So the Gentile magi from the east open the treasure trove, open up the treasure chest, and literally present an offering to the king. So let's look just briefly at these. And there's been speculation about why and what and, and, and a lot of symbolism and things. But, but I do think it's an okay, although Matthew doesn't say it, I do think it's an okay inference to make to say, you know what? Gold was a thing that represented his royalty. Gold tells us this is no ordinary person, no ordinary baby. Yeah, they're, they're in a house that's probably not Joseph and Mary's at this time. Uh, they don't have affluence, but, but the baby is king, so let's give him gold. It's what was on the thrones. It's what's in the king's castle. It represented his royalty. 
Then they present him with frankincense. That represents his divinity. It's a token of divinity. It's saying, you know what? This is what you would have. And they would be incense offerings up to the God and up to God. And so now by giving this little baby gifts of frankincense, we're basically saying not only is he royal, he's king, but he's the chief priest. He is the priestly leader. And so you have that gift. And then lastly, you have myrrh, which represented his humanity. So his royalty is represented in the gifts, his divinity is represented in the gifts, and lastly, his humanity is represented in the gifts. It, it's, it's, it's about his prophetical role, his priestly role, his kingly office. Everything is combined. You can see it within the gifts that are given. But the feelings that the, these devout givers feel they're down on their knees, they're prostrate, they're worshiping. And, and so you could say, man, they just brought so much. They gave so much. But why would a baby need that? Like, really, what, what's a baby going to do with gold and, or frankincense or, or really myrrh? Like Matthew's not giving his foreshadowing to his death, although myrrh is used for embalming and part of the things that, that's associated with burial. Um, wh why? Why? Well, I believe it's because God in his foreknowledge, just like I said week one, that he's omnipotent. He is all powerful and he does things even if we don't understand him or trust him. The Magi are just following the star. They're using their time, a gift of time. They're using their talent, the gift of talent to read the star. They're following the star and they're presenting these gifts fit for a king. But really what it's about is sustaining the king's life, is helping the king journey into safety because the Magi don't know this. And in fact, Joseph and Mary at this point don't know this, but they get warned in a dream that Herod's coming to kill him and so they have to flee to Egypt. Now, how are you going to live? How are you going to afford to travel that distance and stay gone that length of time? Probably the same thing that provided the ability for the Magi to travel, the gold and the frankincense and the myrrh. Those were the three most common traded things. It was literally like a traveler's check. You could, you could go into a foreign country and if, back in the day, if you had a traveler's check, it was accepted at all kinds of different places and all kinds of nations, right? So you didn't, you'd have a currency that would be accepted like a traveler's check. Gold could be traded anywhere. The Magi used it to get to Jesus and the Magi gave it so that Jesus could get to safety into Egypt, right? The, the, the frankincense could be sold and traded, the myrrh sold and traded. So not only did these gifts help people get to Jesus, these gifts help get Jesus safely away from Herod. You say, oh, okay, I get that. Well, you know what's so amazing is, is that, that Jesus literally is everywhere, but at this point as a baby, he's in this particular place and they've got to get him to a place of safety and they use the gifts to get him moving, to get him out, to get him to go. Now think about that for a second. We have this treasure trove, this treasure trove opened up, value unknown and used to help Jesus go. Maybe there's a symbolism today. Maybe there's a similar opportunity today. You know, when we give, we don't give our own money. Th those, those magi gave from their country from their king. They were representatives. They were astrologers. Not, you know, we sing the song, We Three Kings. They represented their king and brought those things. So they gave the king's gifts to the other king. When you and I give of our treasure, we're giving the money that our king, God, has blessed us, allowed us to have, allowed us to steward. He, he lets us give these gifts. And the way we give gifts it says a lot about the giver, us, and it says even more about the receiver, who we're giving it to. So the question is, how do we respond? You know, the Bible says that, that we're cared for and blessed according to the riches of God's glory in Christ Jesus. Uh, in fact, Philippians 4, 9 says this, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. 
And yet you and I sometimes are afraid to give gifts. We're afraid to send money to help send the gospel out. We're afraid to, to be a part of, of moving and advancing the gospel forward because like how are our needs going to be met? If you and I give, like how are our needs going to be met? And I did a sermon on giving a couple weeks back and I'm not trying to get all that, but I'm just saying that there's something about giving that gets the gospel out, that moves Jesus out. And, and it keeps it from being stomped out or, or quenched or crushed like Herod wanted to do. And so if we're going to use money to help people get to Jesus, let's use money to try to get Jesus to people, to others. So how do we respond? Like, what do we do with this message, with, with the Magi's giving of gifts? Well, I think the challenge is for us to use our gifts and present our offerings to God to help get God to people and people to God. The same thing that it was done and used for back then. So, I'm going to ask us to consider giving an offering. I talked about a tithe a couple weeks back in a message uh, with turning up the heat. I I'm talking about an offering, something that's extravagant, something that's beyond expected, something that's like gold or frankincense or myrrh, a gift that's fit for a king. And I would promise you this, that if you give those kind of gifts, not only will you help people get to Jesus, but you will help Jesus get to people. You will keep the gospel moving forward. You will keep the kingship and the citizen, uh, the, the, the kingdom of heaven moving forward. So I'm going to pray that we would open our gifts. You and I would open our gifts, open this treasure trove to him. And, and let me just tell you right now, promise you this, what will happen when you and I start to give gifts not just from our own wealth, but from the riches of God. When we trust God to meet our needs according to his riches, according to his account, when you and I give gifts like that, the same things will happen. The same thing that resulted from the Magi's gift will be the result that you and I experience. We will keep the message and gospel of Jesus alive and we will advance the gospel through our generosity much the same way that the Magi did. So I'm going to ask you to consider, prayerfully consider, today, December 19th, is our Christmas offering. And I want you to think about giving to that. Uh, we're going to use the money for technology. We're going to use the money for missions. We're going to use the money for the next generation ministries. We're going to use the money for some building enhancement improvements and things like that. And we're going to use the money for God's purposes. It's through the stewardship team, we have an outside accounting team. I, I promise you, we can have long discussions over coffee about our frugality and our ability to spend money the way God's asked us to. But the one thing I want you to think about is that you might not even know where your money is going to go. You and I might not have any idea what God's going to do with it. Much like the Magi could have never envisioned that these gifts they would bring the baby because he was the king that deserved it would be the very things that his family perhaps and probably lived on for a time, up to maybe even two years before they returned from Egypt back to Bethlehem and then to Nazareth. Now think about that for just a moment, that you could give a gift and not even know what God's going to do with it, but trust it. You know, we got these screens and uh, these new uh, projectors and we've got new lighting and we've got the ability to live stream and we're excited about that. But we couldn't have envisioned that tonight, Sunday night, we'd be doing a funeral for a member of the community, a young lady uh, with kids, uh, uh, leaving behind a husband and, and kids and her parents and dies of cancer, a Northwest School District employee. Uh, it's just a, a, a brutally sad and difficult thing to, to even consider. And yet we will have a better experience, a better gathering, the ability to live stream, the, the slideshows and the pictures and the sound, everything. And the building itself is this gift. And we're just saying to them, yeah, come on. We're not going to charge you for this because it's last minute. It's the holidays and we know you weren't expecting this. And so, yeah, this is, this is God's place. And, and I could go on and on and on and start connecting, giving to what it's used for and how God gets glory in it and others get good from it. But the reality is, I don't want us to give based upon how it's going to be spent or the, the initiatives or I like missions, but I really don't like technology. 
Let's give a gift based upon how much we've received. Let's give a gift based upon what God has done for us. Let's give a gift based upon the value and the intrinsic worthiness and awesomeness of Jesus. See, he's that gift like that Schwinn Mag Scrambler that we'll always have with us. Well, unlike that Schwinn Mag Scrambler that I don't have anymore. He's that gift that can take us places. He's that gift that can bless us in ways that we never could have dreamt or imagined. You see, God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. And the Spirit is omnipresent. It, it indwells and it's everywhere. And Jesus, because of Jesus, we have access to both God and the Spirit. And if you want to start a relationship with Jesus, I would encourage you tonight or today to do that. I would encourage you right now to consider that. And if, you, if we could help you on your journey to Jesus and you want to know more about what it takes to follow Jesus and how that looks, and how, just send an email to hello at Bar Church. We would love to journey with you towards Jesus. But right now I'm going to close us with prayer and ask God to bless us. Oh, Father, I pray that today we will give a gift fit for a king, that we would understand your beauty and power, that you're, that you're royal and that you're divine and that you're human all in one. And you are worthy of our worship. You are worthy of our life. You are worthy of our gifts. May we give gifts all the time in every way that are fit for a king. I thank you, God, that you're with us always and in all ways and that you never leave us or forsake us, and we don't have to be scared. Your fingerprint is all over creation, and we worship and praise you now. And I pray that not only would we worship you and bow down, but we would open up our treasure trove and the things that you've given us to steward, and we would bring and present an offering to you that would be fit for a king. It's through Jesus that I pray. Amen. Love you guys. Keep looking up. Hey, Barb, Pastor Ryan here for our family time. This sweet time we get together right after the sermon and we get ready to head out and be the church this week. And we love this opportunity to come together and talk about all the wonderful things God is doing in and through Bar Church. And one of the great ways we get to partner with God is to advance in generosity. And this Sunday, today is our Christmas offering. And so we hope you've been praying and seeking God on maybe a direction or an amount that he's been asking you to give above and beyond your regular tithe. And you can give that today at barchurch.com slash Christmas offering. Just be sure to select Christmas offering in the drop down option when you give and know how grateful we are for that. And then this Friday night is our Christmas Eve gathering right here in this building, 5 p.m. There'll be a candlelight service. It'll be family friendly. If you have friends or family in town, we'd love for them to come and gather with us as it'll be a sweet time. But it is it's Christmas Eve this Friday night, and we'd love to see you. And two days right after that, it'll be Sunday, December 26th, and we will not be gathering in person. We will be online only, and we would encourage you to gather with friends or your B group or somebody to come together and join together and watch that online. Again, you can go to barchurch.com slash gatherings and find the way to watch online that works best for you and your family. But please find a group to come together and worship together on that Sunday. And then January 2nd, the first Sunday of the new year, we are going to have our Vision Sunday. So plan now to be here that Sunday and come here. All that God has for Bar Church in 2022 as we get to see the vision that God has for us. If you ever have any questions about anything, you can always email us at help at barchurch.com. We love you. We hope to see you this Friday night for Christmas Eve. Now check out these questions.